FP, we were talking about Bosa in the blame game, and you seem to be on the side of many fans coming down on Nick Bosa, who has been, for the most part, ineffective in his playoff time with the 49ers. He did have a couple of big tackles in the run game, but no sacks in the win over Green Bay. Dude, I, he's the only player I've ever locked into and not watched the ball on defense. Last year, I just watched Nick Bosa, and I, I do the same thing this year. Like, I, I probably should lock it on Fred a little more and maybe Dre a little bit more. But, like, Bosa's been my guy for two years. I love to watch football away from the ball. I don't know, you know, having a, a dad as a football coach, yeah. maybe that's ingrained in me. But I've been watching Bosa, and he just he looks a step slower to me this year. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's just as good, and the sacks haven't been there. And like the callers are saying, there, there's been more attention and double teams and, and whatever and different schemes to stop Nick Bosa, just like – if I'm the Lions, I'm going to stop Christian McCaffrey and make Brock Purdy beat me. Like, that's my game plan. I think it's pretty obvious. But he, he I'm just, I don't think the motor's running as quick as it did last year, and I don't know why. Yeah, he hasn't been as dominant. He's had a, a few games where he's had multiple sacks, and it looks like the old Nick Bosa is coming back. But in general, this defensive line, is certainly against Green Bay, was a little bit muted, no sacks. And you look at Jared Goff and a good offensive line, You've got to find a way to make him uncomfortable, get them into second and third and long, and that way they become much more one-dimensional. And if you pressure Jared Goff, you know that he has a, a propensity to give the ball away. Got to throw it to you. Got to make him throw it to you. Yeah, with some pressure. And you got to obviously stay out of second and short and third and short where Jared Goff can rely on his bread and butter, which is the play action. You know what's going to, the, what's going to, this game's going to come down to, easy for me to say, it, this game's going to come out to Dan Campbell making a wild decision, and whether that wild decision works or not. I was thinking about that on the drive right? in. He's going to he's going to do something that we're all going. What is he doing? And it's either going to work or it's not going to work because he's not going to be scared of this game. He's not going to go conservative like Kyle does sometimes. He's he's a riverboat gambler, and I think that's that's a cliche, but he is like the most gambling head coach I've seen in a long time. Right. Like fourth and six on your own twenty five, and you're like, whoa. Or whatever, a fake punt. That's how his season started. Remember the fake punt against Kansas City in the first game of the year? Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? What? I mean, this guy doesn't care. He gives zero you-know-whats. So, I don't know. That I think the game is going to come down to that or Jake Moody. I think it's going to be close. I, I, I took the Packers. Well, I told my friends to take the Packers and the points. I don't gamble. And I told my friends this week to take the Lions and the points. Could be wrong. That's what I would do. Detroit 12th in the NFL in fourth down conversions. The 49ers are 13th. So neither team that excellent in fourth down conversions. I was thinking the same thing as you on the way in FP in terms of Campbell. Maybe it's a fourth and three on his own 30 and they go for it as opposed to, you know, Kyle Shanahan's been known to be a little bit more conservative. Where do you weigh in on the coaching matchup? Triple eight, nine, five, seven, 95, 70. Let's go to Trey in Oakland who wants to talk about Nick Bosa. What's up, Trey? You're on the game with FP and Dibs. Hey, how you guys doing? Good, Trey. How are you? Oh, I'm doing all right today. You know, slow Tuesday. But um, I want to um, comment on the Bosa, on the Bosa situation. Um, you know, I feel like it's the same thing. You know, like, you know, like, I don't know if he's getting double teamed or I don't know – if he's taking it kind of easy, I, I I just don't know what's wrong with Bosa, but I can see where that caller is coming from. But like he, you know, he does attract a lot of attention. But you got to know, he is surrounded. But I think his situation is different because, like, if I compare him to Max Crosby, you could say this: the, the difference between him and Max Crosby, Bosa is working with a lot more talent on the defensive end than Max Crosby, so it shouldn't be that hard. Now, I can see if he's like in the position with Max Crosby in, and he has to face double teams. But I don't know if Bosa's getting double teamed like that because you got a whole bunch of good guys on the Niners' um, defensive side. You know, you got Fred Warner, a whole bunch of dudes. Even I know he's a linebacker, but you can't sit there and say they're just double teaming Bosa. I think there's something else wrong. We we just don't we just can't figure it out, and I don't think Bosa can figure it out. Yeah, they need to figure it out though, uh, Trey. Thank you for the phone call. They've got about five days to figure it out, and I don't know if it means you want to bring extra people. 49ers don't blitz very often. I think they're 29th in blitz percentage defensively. They've relied on the front four to, to get it done. So do you want to bring five or bring six and then end up exposing yourself on the back end in a secondary that had a little trouble against Green Bay? Ambry Thomas with a couple of big 
pass interference penalties, or or do you just rush the four? You rush your four and you play seven behind and try to. And I think they did this pretty well against Green Bay. Rally up and tackle, bend but don't break. They were good in the red zone. You got to pick one way to go. I just vote for not tackling receivers while the ball is in the air this week. That's good take. I just like if I was a DB coach, coach right there. yeah, I would just say, hey, you guys, whatever coverage we're in this week, let's not try to tackle wide receivers while the ball is in the air for a long time. Can you guys? Are we are we on the same page there? Can we just do that? Okay, thanks. Bye. Duly noted. Thanks. Okay, thanks. 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 Bye. Bye. That's good. We're good. We're going to win then. If you guys don't tackle receivers while the ball is in the air, that's just a good thing. Generally speaking, always. 30th in blitz percentage, FP. 18% was their their percentage at the time that they blitzed. So you're going to go with your front four. It's what you've done most of the year, which is Armstead and Hargrave in the middle and Young and Bosa on the outside. I know they rotate a lot of personnel, and Cleveland Furl's been out, so you're not sure if you're going to have him. Gregory's got to step up and make some plays as he's going to be a free agent at the end of this year. And Javon Kinlaw in the middle, who's had a little bit of trouble in the run game, getting moved off his spot. The D line's going to have to have an elite game to make this Detroit offense uncomfortable because what you said I think is accurate in terms of Detroit. They're going to be aggressive. I don't think that Dan Campbell is coming into this game thinking about protecting anything. This is uncharted territory for the Lions. And Brian Baldinger had an interesting take earlier on the morning roast talking about pressure. And Baldy seems to think he knows where the pressure is in this game. Kurt Warner used to just tell me, look, some guys just don't have big game genes. These games are big. It's sudden death. There isn't come back and we'll fix it next week. There is none of that. And so there is, (laughs) it's, it makes you tight. It makes coaches tight. And so uh, this is there's all the pressures on San Francisco, all of it. And so it'll be interesting to see how the quarterback and the coach and how everything gets called this weekend because Detroit playing with house money, nobody expected them to be here. Um, they're going to play loose and fast. And so can you force them into mistakes? That's Jared Goff. When he plays mistake-free football, they don't lose. Detroit's fans are playing with house money right now. When you get to this point as an athlete, there's no such thing as house money anymore. Once you get to this point, you're like, we're one win away from the Super Bowl. It's not like, oh, hey, oh, good season, guys. We didn't get the Super Bowl. You're on the verge of doing something extra special. So maybe house money last week, maybe house money the the, the week before. Nobody expected it to be this far, but I, I disagree in the sense that, like, when you get to the World Series, if you're the wild card team, you're not playing with house money anymore. You got a chance to win the World Series. True, but at the same time, I do think that Baldy's right in terms of the pressure. The pressure is on San Francisco because they are supposed to be the team that goes to the Super Bowl. Steve Kerr joining us here in about three minutes. I want to get Ryan in San Francisco in first, and he's got a thought on the Niner Lion game. What's going on, Ryan? You're on the game with FP and Dibs. Hey, how's it going, guys? So first off, Dibs, I got to say you're like my favorite radio host of like any radio station in the entire country. Uh, FB, glad that you joined the team. You've been awesome. So, to the point, um, we're not going to have that same situation next year with our defensive coordinator because Steve Wilkes, he's not going to be going to another team as a head coach. He, he's just not managing this defense well. You see, you know, the stunts have gone down. Like, everything's gone down. Like, Bosa and Young should be running crazy sacks right now, and it's not happening. It's it's the problem is Steve Wilkes with the defense, and and that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Thank you, Ryan. I, I appreciate that. I, I think that Wilkes was the scapegoat when they lost three games in a row, and the defense was looking shaky. And Wilkes has to come down out of the booth. He's got to get on the sideline, and so he did. And then the defense got better, and they started winning. And so now it's not, you know, Steve Wilkes' fault anymore. And then you come off a game like that against Green Bay where the defense struggles in spots, and now we want to blame Steve Wilkes again. I think he's right in terms of Wilkes getting a head coaching job, but I don't think it's because he's necessarily doing poorly. And I don't mean to cross Ryan and go against him after those kind words uh, because, Ryan, you're my favorite sports talk caller. You're going to be the second best. I know. I'm going down his rankings. but I I feel like. I think it's hard to to just blanketly blame Steve Wilkes for 
you know, Bosa and Chase Young in the defense maybe having off years. Yeah, I've never been a blame coach guy. Ever, 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 ever. I just, I just don't, I don't, I never go there. I just don't see sports that way. I see it's the players that play. The coaches don't. Coaches can be a big influence, like the guy we're having on about a minute right now is the best coach in the NBA. But yeah, I called him Steve Wilkes Booth for a while, by the way. That's a little edgy. Yeah, it was a little edgy. Yeah. <laughs> but then he came down. He wasn't Steve Wilkes Booth. Oh, because he was in the booth. He was in the Steve yeah. Wilkes Booth. Yeah, I get that. And then he, now he's Steve Wilkes sidelines. Niners 13th in the league in QB pressures, which a lot of times I think is a more indicative stat of how you're doing at just you know straight up causing havoc. Because sometimes you pressure the quarterback and you don't get the sack. And we look at it and you know Nick Bosa I didn't have any sacks. Well, he had five pressures, which tells me that He's still being impactful in the game. It depends who the quarterback is on pressures. You think Josh Allen cares about pressures? I think Jared Goff cares about pressures. Pressures are scary, especially with a guy like Nick Bosa coming after you. No doubt. I think it's a quarterback mentality. I know you care about getting hit. You care about pressures. Are you scared of the pressure? I, I, I don't think Brock Purdy cares about pressures. Brock Purdy stands tall as tall as he can in the pocket right. with like four guys right in his face and delivers seeds right out of the money. Yeah, and I think Patrick Mahomes would be the same in terms of, you know, Oh, you're going to pressure me? I'll go sidearm here. Or I'll roll out, and uh, I'll just still make something happen.